I finally read Words of Radiance and it is indeed as good as everyone says, so I wanted to do a spoiler-free review of it for people who have read The Way of Kings, but couldn't be sure to continue the series or not. Even if you kind of like The Way of Kings, you might still not be sure if you want to continue, because even though I really like The Way of Kings and gave it 5 stars, it's sort of a slow book in the beginning. It takes quite a bit of time for it to get going. This one is paced much faster. If that is not enough, I'm happy to say this book answers one of your most asked question. Did the Knights Radiant poop themselves in their shard plates? The answer might surprise you. Read and find out. But like at the end of the day, it boils down to should you read the highest rated book on Goodreads? So yeah, I guess you should give it a try. And when I say the highest rated, I mean among the books above like 25,000 ratings. I wasn't able to find any book rated higher than this one. Still, I do think it is indeed better than The Way of Kings. The Way of Kings has 300 pages of setup. Words of Radiance doesn't have any of that. It just picks up where The Way of Kings left and keeps going without ever slowing down. No more multiple prologues or false starts or anything like that. Well, just one prologue, but it's a different viewpoint for King Gavilar's assassination. So it brings some additional info on that event. As you remember, in the first book, Shalan found out that the Voidbringers were actually the Pershendi. So she is trying to warn everyone. Dalinar is trying to unite the High Princes and get the war against the Parshendi to end. And Kaladin and Bridge 4 are now legit in Dalinar's army. They're protecting Dalinar, no more slaves. Now I'm not quite sure how Brandon Sanderson conceived this series initially, but I would say Words of Radiance is actually the first book of Stormlight Archive. To me, The Way of Kings is a bit like a prologue to the whole thing. It introduces you to the main characters and get the characters to where they need to be. But it really doesn't quite get into the main elements of the story. Words of Radiance is where you start really getting introduced to the Orders of the Knights Radiance, which is the main thing of the series. Different characters develop different powers and they have different ideals based on their orders. You learn more about shard plates, you learn more about the Spren, you have more characters interacting with Spren. In the Way of Kings we really only had Syl, but now we have others and they all have different characteristics. That's a lot of fun to see. I won't get into it much now, but maybe I will make a more detailed spoiler discussion video. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments. Also, if you are in the 85% of the viewers who are not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video. The main character of Words of Radiance is Shalan. That's why I'm a bit confused by the cover art, which has Kaladin. I mean, Kaladin is the main, main character. So it's not completely senseless, but I think it should have been Shalan. I think this cover should have been the Way of Kings cover, but the Way of Kings cover is a generic knight, I guess. I'm sad to say the UK covers for Stormlight Archive are atrocious. I love the UK covers for Mistborn. I bought those covers, but for Stormlight Archive, I prefer the US covers. I mean, look at this. What is this supposed to be? Kaladin? What is that armor? I don't know. It's not good. The Way of Kings wasn't good either. But anyway, the main character whose backstory you read in Words of Radiance is Shalan. Now I know there are mixed reactions for Shalan. Some people love her, some hate her. I didn't like her much in the first book until some of the last chapters. In this book, you spent quite a bit of time with her and she has a lot of character development. It's really great to follow how she's changed by the things she goes through. She really starts taking control of things. She is much more interesting. There are quite a few reveals about the events in the first book. I don't think her backstory chapters here are as important as Kaladin's backstory chapters in the first book. I did get a bit bored in those, but I got a bit bored in Kaladin ones too. I'm generally not a huge fan of backstory chapters. In the first book, they're kind of important because they are the only way for us to know that Kaladin was trained as a surgeon. I don't think these ones do as much other than make us feel for Shalan. I didn't quite get anything new about her character but you learn about her family if you're curious. It doesn't really matter because most of them are dead anyway but there are a few important moments. Like I already knew that she had been through tough stuff but it's actually tougher stuff than I thought. So that's what they bring. There isn't much Dalinar but there's quite a bit of Adolin. As you remember Adolin and Shalan are on the way to an arranged marriage so there's quite a bit of that. I think it's fun. There's a lot of dueling. It's fun to see Adel and duel. I still think people would use substances that would increase their heart rates before dueling, 
but that still doesn't get addressed. So apparently it is indeed correct that 10 heartbeats is different for everyone, but no one does anything to increase their heart rate. And that is just strange to me. There's still tons of mentions of the safe hand. I still don't get it. It is just too random for me. And religions do have random rules to make people blindly obey. That is an intentional thing most religions do because it is important people don't question religious rules. They have to obey even if it's really stupid. But strangely enough, the religion isn't really well explored in this world. I mean, if at least the safe hand was the right hand, I'd say it is to discourage women from using swords. Because most religious rules are to control people and they have some basis, even if vague. The safe hand thing has a huge part in this book and it's something I still can't quite understand. The humor often falls flat for me. Obviously, humor is very subjective and I know it's not Sanderson's forte. But the type of humor is the telling jokes type and it's really hard to make it work. It's usually a hit or miss. I think the more effective humor is the humor that comes from the character. There's that kind of humor too and those work better. But I think the shortcoming of the series in handling humor is that humor is not part of all people. There are funny characters like Rock and Lopin and they sort of take care of the humor. And I do think those characters are funny but I wish there was a more complete approach to humor. Sometimes the book sort of hides behind the facade of well it was supposed to be a bad joke blah blah but I don't think that's a good excuse. The humor should always come from the character. At least the humor I like. I don't think there is any fun in Kaladin making bad jokes. Maybe there could be some fun in Dalinar making dad jokes for example. It doesn't happen but you know he's so serious and he's a dad it could be possible to make it work once or twice. So then you can justify a bad joke. But otherwise, I disagree with that approach. Even bad jokes should come from the character. Same thing with banter. Calvin gets into a lot of banter with another character. And I don't think those work at all. They feel so out of character for Kaladin. Another funny character is Wit. I know people have fun with him. He is supposed to be this character having background adventures in the Cosmere universe. I'm trying to enjoy him, but it's difficult. First of all, I don't find him particularly clever. I think he just insults everyone who isn't a main character. He gives some help and advice to the main characters, which I don't like because he isn't really part of the story. I don't know, I don't like there's this random character showing up and giving advice, but I know it's supposed to be fun. I'm trying really hard to understand. But also I haven't read Elantris. Maybe if I had read it, it would have made more sense. The interludes are once again hit or miss, but they're overall better. In one instance, I was actually glad there was an interlude. It was sort of an emotionally draining scene and I would normally stop reading, but then the interlude started, so I kept reading. We have another Risen interlude. We have a new character left. Her interlude was fun. Taravangian interlude is interesting. There is a Parshandi, Ashonai. Her interludes are interesting. It is a thousand page book, but it has Sanderson's signature clarity in writing. Everything is crystal clear. I didn't get lost even once. I wasn't confused by anything. I don't know how he does it. He says he has lots of beta readers. So I'm guessing he's really good at fixing any points that people get lost while reading. A lot happen in this book. It's a fairly complex world with tons of characters and interesting dynamics. Like the way he introduces completely new concepts without confusing you is so remarkable. It might be best to talk about those in the spoiler video, but you get a Parshendi viewpoint, you get another Taravangian viewpoint. Those chapters introduce very complex new ideas and they create this awe and mystery without being confusing. That kind of thing seems easy, but it's very difficult to pull off. And he does it better than anyone I know, really. Just like in The Way of Kings, the last 10% of the book is where everything is falling into place. It's incredibly fast paced. You won't be able to stop, so don't try to read that during your lunch break or something. I saw some fans call it Sanderlanch. I like that term, it's fun. Brandon calls it the prestige as in the final reveal of a magic trick. But those last parts are always thrilling in his books. Also, once you read this book, you can start picking your order of Knights Radiant. They had a test for The Way of King's Kickstarter. I did that test. I'll link it in the description, but my results weren't super decisive. I got 50 on Truth Watcher and 46 on 
else caller. Those were the top two for me. I think I would identify as an else caller, so it's kind of accurate. But let me know your orders in the comments if you do the test and if you think it's accurate. So yeah, I think this book is an achievement in fantasy writing. I think it's very good. I can talk more about it in a spoiler video. Let me know if you'd like that and make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that. There will be more Stormlight content on this channel. I'm quite getting into this so we'll see what else happens. There will at least be one Oathbringer video before Rhythm of War releases. If you enjoy this video please leave a like to let me know and I hope to see you in the next video. Goose, 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 goose,